Here is my descent with modification. My sister Sue and I are the children of my dad. Dad is the son of Grandpa. Grandpa is also the father of Uncle John. Uncle John is the father of Cousin Liz. You could probably draw a family tree like that pretty well yourself. We're adding your brothers, sisters, cousins, aunts, uncles, and the like. Now, an interesting principle is, is uh, present here. Sue and I look more like each other than we look like Liz. Because Sue and I shared a common ancestor in Dad more recently than we shared a common ancestor in Granddad with Liz. That's a very basic principle of, of biology. The more recently you shared a common ancestor, the more similar you are. And this goes across the board. It's also true of organisms uh, outside of your own family. So bears and dogs look more like each other than they look like lions. Because bears and dogs shared a dog-like ancestor, a canid ancestor, with each other more recently than they shared a common carnivore ancestor with the filiforms. Similarly, Cebus and Howler monkeys look more like each other than they look like apes because Cebus and Howler monkeys shared a common monkey-like ancestor with each other more recently than they shared a common primate ancestor with the apes. But bears and monkeys look more like each other than they look like salamanders because bears and monkeys shared a common mammal ancestor with each other more recently than they shared a common vertebrate ancestor with the salamanders. Descent with modification is this concept of branching and splitting tree of life. Think of it as a big family tree of species, if you will, in which you can look at similarities and differences and group organisms based upon the recency of their common ancestor. Now, let's get back to this idea that we were talking about a moment ago about nanny bubble for monkeys. Charles Darwin believed that the appropriate relationship between the African apes and the humans was that it was pretty close and that monkeys were more distantly related to the African ape and human groups. Many students look at this relationship between monkeys, apes, and humans as monkeys evolving into apes, evolving into humans. This is really wrong. Let's use an analogy with a family tree. Let's say that here's you, and here's your brother, and you are the children of your father, right? And here's your cousin, and of course, you share a grandfather with your cousin. Okay? Everybody's familiar with that. Now, the idea that monkeys evolved into apes, evolved into humans, is kind of like saying your cousin evolved into your brother, evolved into you. <laughs> so if somebody comes up to you and says, oh, evolution means man evolved from monkeys, or actually, <laughs> something that I actually hear on radio call-in shows, there's usually, you know, every three or four shows, somebody calls in with a question that they are sure is going to stump the evolution lady. If man evolved from monkeys, why are there still monkeys? This is supposed to be a really tough thing for me to deal with. Well, one way of thinking about it is, is that if you evolve from your cousin, why is your cousin still here? <laughs> and of course, the obvious answer is, well, no, I didn't evolve from my cousin. Bingo. That's what we're talking about here. Humans and African apes shared a common ancestor very recently. Monkeys shared a common ancestor with the human and ape group more distantly. More distantly than that, we shared a common ancestor with the lemurs. More distantly than that, we shared a common ancestor with other mammals. And we can go back and back and back with this branching and splitting tree of life through time. 